Now you guys are quiet. So here, Mr. G Math, you ready? Woo! Coming at you live, 7202. <laughs> On a glorious Wednesday afternoon, June 20, 28th. Wow. All right. This lesson is on position, velocity, and acceleration. So here are some terms to know. Position function gives the location of an object at time t. Usually use the letter s, maybe x, maybe y at t to describe where the object is positioned over time. Velocity, the rate of change of the position usually v at t. Velocity is positive for upward or rightward motion and negative if it's going down or to the left. Acceleration, that's the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. And then when you hear rate of change, do you see the word derivative in terms of the connection there? The initial position is when you plug in 0 for t and where it started. The initial velocity is when you plug in 0 for t when after you find the velocity function. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Do you remember that there's a difference between velocity and speed? Velocity can be positive or negative. Well, speed is only a positive number. The net change, the word displacement, right, is the net change in position. Where did you start and where did you end, right? Just subtracting those. Well, total distance is the distance you went in each direction as positive numbers. Do those terms feel familiar to you? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Do they feel familiar to you? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yeah. You can say the words, right? Example one, S at T equals that. That means that is a position function. And it says find the velocity and find the acceleration. How would I find the velocity using that function? The derivative What's the derivative? 3t squared plus 1. How would I find the acceleration of the velocity? What's the derivative of the velocity? Done. Can't be that simple, right? Use the position functions function s to t equals 16t cubed minus 36t squared plus 24 of an object moving on a horizontal line. That means it's right, moving right or left. Distant units are measured in feet and time is in seconds. What is the initial position of the object? What number do I plug in for t? Zero. So if you plugged in zero, 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 what number are you left with? And we have a unit. So the initial position is 24 feet. That's where we started. What is the velocity of the object at t equals 1 second? So first I need to know the velocity. What is the velocity? Using this function here. 3 times 16. Is that in your wheelhouse? <laughs> 3 times 16. How about 3 times 10? And 3 times 6. And then add them. How about 30 and 18? Is that in it? Is that okay? So it's 48t squared. How about 2 times 36? Is that reasonable? Yeah. What number would that be? And then the derivative of 24 would just be 0. Then what number would you plug in? 1. And what answer would you get? What is the velocity when t equals 1? What's 48 take away 72? And the answer is negative 24. And there's units, feet per second. What is that telling you? That's instantaneous rate, right? What direction is the particle, object moving? What direction? At 1. It's moving to the left, right? How can you tell? Because the negative velocity, okay? What is the speed at t equals 1? It's the absolute value of that, right? And units matter. So the speed is 24 feet per second. 
How do you know it's feet? In the question, it says units are measured in feet and time is measured in seconds. Number five, same equation. What is the acceleration at t equals one? What do I need to find? What's the acceleration function? So do you remember the velocity one? What's two times 48? 96 and then one times negative 72. And then what number do you plug in? What's the answer? So 96 and negative 72. Is the object uh, speeding up or slowing down, you think? No, no, no. The acceleration is 24 feet per second squared. So is this, is this speeding up or slowing down? What, at one second, what is the velocity? And what is the acceleration? Do they match? No, one's negative and one is positive. So what's happening? It's slowing down because they're opposite. They're going against each other. Six, when is the object at rest? Once they cancel out, so after one second. When you talk about rest, you're talking about which part? Position, velocity, or acceleration? Position. No. Yeah. Rest. When is it not moving? Velocity. velocity. And when the velocity is what number? Zero. So take the velocity equal to zero. zero. How would you solve that equation? What would you do? Do you know what the largest number that goes into 48 and 72 is? How many times? So if I divided everything by 12, what would that leave me with? So 12 goes into 48. So there's actually a larger number, right? But that's okay. 24 actually went into both of them evenly. So then you could divide everything by 2 if you wanted to. Okay, keep going. When is the object at rest? Factor. What do they both have in common? T. What's left over? 2T minus 3. Solve it. When is it at rest? When T equals 0. So initially it's at rest, right? And then add 3 and divide by 2. And again, this is in seconds. So at 0 seconds, which means the initial velocity is 0 and at one and a half seconds it rests. All right, turn the page when you're ready. When is the object moving to the right? Well, when we're talking about moving to the right or left, which function would we use? Velocity, position, or acceleration? Velocity. So the velocity function. We just found out when the velocity is at rest, which means it's not moving left and it's not moving right. What were those numbers? Zero and? Zero. 3 over 2, right, which is 1 and a half. The velocity equation, again, is 48t squared minus 72t. From 0 to 3 over 2, what direction is it moving, right or left? How could I find out? What's an easy number to plug into here? If you plug in positive 1, is the answer positive or negative? What does that tell you about direction? It's going to the left. How about when it's greater than 3 over 2? What's an easy number to plug in that's bigger than 3 over 2? 2 or 3 or 4 or a million. 
or a hundred thousand or a hundred billion? When you plug that in, will the answer be positive or negative? And yes, you can be ridiculous like a hundred billion to get to know that the answer is positive. What happens? What's an easy number less than zero to plug in? Negative one. And is the answer going to be positive or negative when you plug in a negative number? Because a negative times a negative is positive, and a negative squared is positive. So no matter what negative number you plug in, it's going to be positive. So when is the object moving to the right? What intervals? From negative infinity to where? To zero. Not including zero, because it's at rest at zero. When else is it? So from 3 over 2 to infinity. So from negative infinity to 0 and from 3 over 2 to infinity, it's moving to the right. When is it moving left? From 0 to 3 over 2. See that? Why does it not include that? Because it's at rest at 0 and 3 over 2. So is it moving left at 0 or right at 0? It's resting. So it's neither. So it's not included. Okay, number 9. When is the velocity of the object 54 feet per second? How would I find that? I would take the velocity function and what would you do? Do you feel like solving that? Yeah. No. So, can you open up your computers, go to Desmos, and solve it? What if I told you it's not factorable? Would you then want to use the Desmos? Yeah. Okay. So, this is what we're going to do. To make it easier, to make it easier, we're going to make it equal to zero. Is that okay? Because then it makes it easier to look off the graph. So, I'm going to subtract 54, and then when I type that in, all I have to do is look for the x intercepts, right? Or the t intercepts. Does Desmos allow you to type it in with t? And the answer is yes. <laughs> I think it's yes. But you might have to write down y equals in front. Yeah, you got to write down y equals. You got to write it as a function. So y equals 48t squared minus 72t subtract 54. And what am I looking for? And so, and that's going to represent t in this case. Wow, ask Einstein. Who wants to meet Einstein again? Because this is a theor <laughs> because it's a theoretical situation, that's why the answers are negative and positive. If it was put into a real world context, like a car moving in the real world, you'd be right that you couldn't have t being negative. But it is a theoretical situation, so that's why they're allowing t to be negative. Uh, this is the answers I got. So when is the velocity that? When t equals that, and these is both in seconds. So when t equals negative 0.549 and positive 2.049 seconds. So, what do you mean? So, if we were to do this analytically, we would just solve the 
When you say the word analytically, you mean without a computer or a calculator or any of that? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not factorable, you, really you're only, I mean you could complete the square, but it'd be challenging that you'd use the quadratic formula. Oh, yeah. um, number 10, what is the displacement from 0 to 2? How do I find that? So for displacement, I'm going to use the position equation. What's the position at 2 seconds? So I'm going to remind you what the position equation was. So it was 16t cubed minus 36t squared plus 24. So I want to know the position at 2. I want to know the position at 0. And then I just subtract the 2. Where did it end? Where did it start? And just subtract the two values. And that gives me the displacement. The displacement can be negative. I have a question. Yep. Um, I forgot my question. Oh, um, with position, the position equation? Sure. Oh, the position Function, equation, equation yep. Yeah. Will it always be given? Or will we have to look for position? No, there, it could well be possible that you need to have some tools to work backwards or forwards with it. But right now, it's going to be given. Right. So uh, displacement is not total distance. So displacement is just where did you when did you, where did you start? Where did you end? And that's the, the difference in between them. Total distance. We'll look to see what that is in a second. So uh, when you plug in two and when you plug in zero, what would you get? So when you plug in two, and you could use Desmos for this. That's from the front page. It's given in the question. That's okay. Where there's a T, I'm going to plug in 2. And then I'm going to subtract. And we already know when you plug in 0, the answer is 24. <laughs> So 16 times 2 cubed minus 36 times 4 plus 24, take away 24. If you used a calculator, and this does feel like a calculator question, you get negative 16 feet. What does that tell you? What did the displacement tell you? The object ended up to the left by how many feet from where it started, right? What is the total distance traveled? by the object between 0 and 2 seconds. All right. How will I find the total distance? Different than the displacement. So do you remember? The object is at rest at 3 over 2, which is in the middle of 0 and 2. Total distance is, what distance did you travel to the left? What distance did you travel to the right? And then you add them up as positive numbers. So I want the app. I know it's traveling to the left, right? Yeah. But it's not just s at 3 at 2, which is 1 and a half. You actually have to subtract where it started, right? And it's the absolute value of that. And I need to know the absolute value of this as well. That's an S. <laughs> so. If you plug in 3 over 2 into the position function, what's the position at 3 over 2? I'm going to use decimals. So again, the position is 16. I'm going to put in 3 over 2 cubed
I'm going to put in minus 36, 3 over 2. Oh, that's not 2. Squared. I heard a ding again. Plus 24. So when I put that in, where's the position at one and a half seconds? What's the answer? Negative three. We already know at zero, it's 24, correct? Yeah. So I'm going to put those numbers in. I'll show you when we get out of Desmos. So it's negative three, subtract 24, and it's the absolute value of that. Then what's it at S at two? How can I do this easily now? Where there's three over two, what am I going to do? I'm going to erase it and put in a, I need to know two. Don't we know two? Oh, we know two already? Yeah, So two is eight, and we already know three over two, which is, which is negative three. Okay. So this is what it looks like when you put it together. So negative three, remember? Subtract, where did it start to begin with? So in other words, it started at 24 and ended at negative 3. What distance was covered? Think of a number line. Positive 24 and you ended at negative 3. How much did you go to the left? And it was, how many numbers did you pass? 27. And then, if you're at negative 3 and you ended up at 8, go back the other way. Now it's traveling right. So you were at negative 3 and you end at 8, how many numbers did you pass on the number line? Negative 3 to 8. And then put it all together in what distance was traveled. And there's a unit. The difference between total distance and displacement. You need to know when it's moving left and when it's moving right, and then add them up. All right, last part of the examples. And we've done these already last week. When you look at a position graph, do you see that? That's like a distance graph right here. Can you answer questions like this? Was the car going faster at A or at B? And the question is, which one is steeper, right? Is it steeper at A or at B? So point B is steeper, isn't it? Oh, I wrote it in the wrong I wrote it in the wrong spot. So point B is steeper. Let's try this one here. I'll give myself space here. When did the car stop? When did the car stop? There you go. So Again, we're not looking at the velocity graph. We're looking at a distance graph. So when did the distance stop growing or going in either direction, right? So when was the vehicle stopped from C to D? Notice it's horizontal there. At which point was the car's velocity the greatest? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. No. And it's a point. At what point is the velocity the greatest? Yeah. And the answer is point B. Why is the answer not E? Because the velocity is negative at E, and a positive number is greater than a negative number. Okay? Now, at which point is the car's speed the greatest? E. Now you would say point E, because it's the absolute value, right? You take that negative slope and make it positive, and where is the steepest part of the whole graph? At E. All right, 16, 17, and 18. Suppose S at T equal that equation. It gives the position in feet above the ground for a ball thrown into the air from the top of a high cliff where time is measured in seconds. So it says, find the initial velocity. What would you do to find the initial velocity? You take the derivative, right, of the position. What's the derivative of this position? Negative 32t plus 
48. Then what would you do is you plug in 0, and if t is 0, what was the initial velocity? 48 what? Feet per second. So when the ball was thrown with that initial velocity, 48 feet per second, at what time does the ball hit the ground? When would the ball hit the ground? So is this going to be a position one, or is this going to be a velocity one? So if you take the velocity equal to zero, you know what you're going to be finding? Is the point, instead of going up, it changes and goes down. To hit the ground, that's the position equation. So can you take the position equation, what are you going to make it equal to? What would be a good step here to solve this equation? Factor. Now, I, because it's an equation, I can just divide out the numbers to make it smaller. So I'm going to help you. What's the largest number that goes into all of them evenly to reduce it down? Negative and then what does it become? 0 divided by negative 16. 0. This is just t squared. 48 divided by negative 16. And 160 divided by negative 16. Just negative 10. Don't use a diamond. Factor that. <laughs> Thank you. I heard it. And what are the signs? Negative 5 and positive 2. So here's an example. Because it's in a real context, it's not a theoretical problem. It's a real ball being thrown in the real world. That this factor, t plus 2, gives me the answer negative 2, which is not something in the real world we talk about. So that in the real world, in this context, throwing a ball in the air and hitting the ground, the answer is 5 seconds. Yes, it would ask whether it's theoretical or real world, right? And this one's real. So when you throw a ball up in the air, how many seconds till it hits the ground? There's no way you can say the answer is negative 2. So the answer is positive 5. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> at what time does the ball reach its maximum height? So the maximum height means instead of rising, at what point does it fall? Is that position or velocity? Velocity. And it's when the velocity is equal to? Zero. When the velocity is equal to zero, that's when it changes, right? When it's at rest. When it's rising and then it falls, there's a moment where it has to rest and then goes down. So what's the velocity function again? It's right here. Negative 32t plus 48 equals zero. If you solve for t, you would subtract 48, divide by negative 32. 16 goes into both evenly. So at what time did it reach its maximum height? 3 over 2 or 1 and a half seconds. So at 1 and a half seconds, you know in algebra, we'd find that answer by going negative b over 2a. Right? With the parabola? Algebra. Yeah. If you wanted to quickly find the vertex of a parabola, what would you do? Negative b over 2a. But this is using calculus tools to do what we did in algebra. And physics. Guess what the foundation of all physics is? Calculus. All right, over and out.